The Owl Tetadrachma from Athens is probably the most famous ancient coin, with its very unique and quite beautiful designs of the goddess Athena on the obverse and a charming little owl on the reverse, with the letters Alpha, Theta, Epsilon, making the abbreviation for Athenaion or from the Athenians. It was also a very successful coin, being struck for centuries. The very first owl coins were made at around 510 BC in the late Archaic period, roughly at the same time when democracy was instituted in the city. It kept being made all the way to 42 BC, over a century after Rome had already conquered all of Greece. Imagine having such a prestigious and respected coin that it kept being issued for nearly five centuries. The silver used for striking these coins came from Mount Laurion, located close to Athens, as well as from Athens' many tributary states. Hordes of these coins have been found all over the eastern Mediterranean, showing it was incredibly popular with merchants from other nations, and famous for its consistent weight and purity of its metal. Today, I bring you a bit of a curiosity. Look at this coin. Most Athenian owls you see in history books and in the numismatic market are not amongst the very first owls to be struck. They come from the early classical period, between 454 and 400 BC, around the time Athens was on the height of its power and prosperity, and during the legendary Peloponnesian War against Sparta. What we're looking at today are some examples of the very first owls ever to be struck, the so-called archaic owls. Although they show the same things, the same designs, on its obverse and reverse, that is, Athena and the owl, their style is remarkably different to their classical counterparts. Let's have a look at some examples of different denominations and try to understand why these coins look so different. Let's get started. Okay. Here we have an archaic tetadrachma, dated around 510 to 490 BC. Quite a compact flan. These earlier coins almost look like balls rather than discs. On the obverse we have the bust of Athena looking to the right. She wears a crested helmet. The crest has a geometric pattern. Her hair looks relatively simple. It's a series of lines that go from her forehead to where the helmet connects to the head and the face has exaggerated features. The nose and jaw are very prominent and pointy. The eyes are depicted frontally, rather than on a side profile, which is what would have been realistic. The ear is also unusually big. The style might come as a surprise for many of you. When we think about ancient depictions of Athena, most of us immediately think of this gorgeous, idealized image of a goddess, sculpted with a high degree of fidelity to human proportions and a remarkable realism, not only of the human shape, but also in the clothes she wears, which are sculpted in a way that we can appreciate the fabric over the anatomically correct body, the volume and flexibility of stuff that has volume, like her hair flowing out of the hard metal helmet and then flaring up and taking more space, among other very intricate details that mimic reality and are a sign of this artistic style. This highly realistic style is associated with the later classical period of Greek art, which began around the 480s BC. Before that, there were two major artistic periods when Greece came out of the Dark Ages after the Bronze Age collapse, we see the emergence of the Geometric period, that's from 1050 to the 700s BC. This period is characterized by stiff shapes. As the name suggests, geometric shapes served as a base for creating the depictions of humans and animals, for example. The imagery we have in our coin comes from one period later, the Archaic period, so it is in Archaic style. This is dated between the 700s and 500s BC. This period is characterized by the continuation of a certain stiffness of the human image, but by this time the Greek world was once again prospering. Commerce with neighboring regions such as the Near East and Egypt brought with them new artistic influences, 
we see statues becoming remarkably similar, for example, to those from contemporary uh, Egyptian pharaonic art. As the archaic period progresses, we start seeing this lovely amalgamation of the relative stiffness of Egyptian art with a new trend of realism and fluidity that was being developed in Greece. This statue, for example, of a fallen Trojan warrior is contemporary with our coin and is a nice example of late archaic art where we can clearly see remnants of that stiffness on his face, a certain blockiness on the main body parts, but the style is giving way to an anatomically correct, more organic way of showing the human body. Having said that, let's look once again at our tetadrachma. Now we can see how this bust of Athena is perfectly in line with the aesthetic th trend of the time. Her image is still relatively stiff, but it is certainly curvier than anything from the geometric period. On the reverse, our little owl is also shown in archaic style. It's, <laughs> it's quite top-heavy, we can see its tiny legs compared to its huge torso and head. I think it looks very charming. To its right, we have the letters Alpha, Theta, Epsilon for Athenaion, and to its left, an olive branch with a little olive and a couple of leaves. We have some other examples to look at today. In this one, Athena's face was sadly left off plan, but we can appreciate a bit better the geometric detail on the crest of her helmet. Later examples in the classical period will abandon this geometric pattern and show the crest made out of horse hair, which it was originally made out of. The owl in this example has also been decapitated, poor little thing, but we can appreciate a bit better its tiny little legs, disproportionately tiny against its massive body. In this following example, which has seen quite a bit of circulation, Athena was made with very full lips. You can see it in the lower right part of the flan. Sadly, we can see the front-facing eyes in this example due to wear, but we can also appreciate it in the very clear geometric pattern in the crest here as well. The owl in this reverse is marvelous. Sadly, it lost half of its head again, being struck slightly off land, but in this example we can appreciate more organic lines appearing on the designs. After all, we are talking about a bird, it is supposed to be at least somewhat aerodynamic. Its wings look like they can flex, they can fold out outwards due to its curvy shape. The chest feathers bend around the shape of its chest and wings. Marvelous little thing. So far, we've only looked at tetadrachma, coins that were mostly meant for export, for trade with important merchants. They weighed around 17 grams, and that was a lot of silver back then. What we have now is a single drachma, so a quarter of what we've seen before. This coin is much more likely to have been used to buy goods in the Athens market, as it was a much more manageable sum of money. We have the exact same design as in the tetadrachma, but this time the entire image of Athena was struck on the obverse. We can appreciate all of her details, with her big bulging eye, her pointy nose and chin, and her nearly perfectly round head. Notice this coin has much more circulation wear compared to the previous coins. Being a smaller amount of money meant it was much more practical for everyday purchases, so it probably circulated much more. On the reverse, we have the owl once again. Sadly, the wear has only left us with the outline of the design, but it's all there. The owl, the olive branch to the left, and the letters. Also worthy of note is the grainy texture on the coin surface. This is called crystallization, a chemical reaction that sometimes happens to ancient silver that can make the coin very brittle. I hope Matt, the owner of these coins, handles this beauty with lots of care. It's a fragile little thing. And to wrap it up, a very rare oboe, the small change of ancient Athens. It was worth a sixth of a drachma. This tiny little thing weighs just 0.7 grams. 
despite its minute size, this was enough silver for you to buy a reasonable amount of food or any other small, small valued item. All of the design elements from the larger coins are still here. The helmet, the crest on the helmet, her full face. It's quite a feat for the engravers of the time to be able to sculpt such small details on a die. The reverse is amazing. The engravers added a small square border around the design and we can see this definitely helped the mint workers when it was time to strike the flan to center the whole thing on the little planchet as the square shape helped align the die with the metal disc. Once again, it's all there. The olive branch, the owl with a couple of massive bulging eyes and the three letters. And there you have it, the archaic Athenian owl coin. Do you have an Athenian owl in your collection? If you do, which type? Let us know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave a like and consider subscribing if you did. Check out the buy me a coffee link and help out the channel. Happy collecting and I'll see you soon.